Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I hope you are well. I'm trying to get back into a regular uploading schedule and with that in mind I've got this quick build video for you today. This video is a first for me because it's the first time I've built any modern armour. And I have to say I had a great time building this kit. It was really fun putting it together. It went together very very well. Um, I love the subject matter and I love the, the look of this vehicle. This slat armour in particular really uh, drew me to this kit over other ones. And the whole process was really just a, a nice break from the norm and the normal tanks that I build. So hopefully I'll be building some more modern armour soon. So as you can see this is the British FV510 Warrior with the slat armour. You can see here on the side of the box we get a better view of uh, all those optics which are on top of the vehicle. There are lots of clear parts in this kit. So looking inside the box, let's start with this sprue here. This is sprue D and it's got all the slat armour there. The side piece is in uh, one continuous piece. And I'm really glad that this is in plastic. There are kits out there where you can get uh, photo etched slat armour, but for me this is perfect. The vehicle itself is made of two large and detailed pieces, which fit together really nicely. And this is kind of a theme for the kit here. We've got lots of high quality pre-molded detail and the fit between the parts is excellent. The tracks are individual links that come in pairs so you don't have to cut them off the sprue, there's just one attachment point per, per link. We'll look more of those later. We have some photo etch here for various grills and we have a uh, wheel painting stencil there as well. And of course a metal barrel. Being a modern British vehicle, we have very few decals, primarily the number plates. This is an interesting little addition from Meng. This is a vehicle information sheet. This one looks like it's in Mandarin, I think. Here's the English version. So we've got some information here on the history of the vehicle and the theatres in which it fought. and some really handy reference photos on the back as well. This is quite useful for looking not just at the colour but also some of the, uh, the chipping or the damage or the fading that occurs with the paintwork. And then we have the same sheet in uh, Russian. The instructions are very nice, very similar to other men kits that I've built. They're in colour and the parts that you add in any given step are highlighted in yellow. Occasionally it's a little bit hard to see where the arrows go for some of the, uh, the connections, but uh, it's easy to see on the model itself. Every part on this kit is really well keyed, um, location pins are really clear, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't make many mistakes I think on this kit. And then we have this single paint scheme at the back. Before I move on to the build, let me take a moment to say thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Your input and your support really makes a difference to this channel, guys. So thank you very much, it is greatly appreciated. And I always love to hear your feedback on our Patreon page. So I wasn't really familiar with the Warrior uh, before I bought this kit and obviously I'm still not an expert now but from what I understand this uh, Warrior family started life in the early 1970s. And quickly back to the kit and note how the suspension arms attach to the chassis with these square brackets. It's a great system, it keeps the suspension arms locked into the vehicle but also it allows a bit of play in them from the outside when you've got the wheels on. I really like the photo etch in this kit. If you notice, when I peel this sticky back off, the pieces just fall out. They're not attached to the uh, fret, so there's no annoying uh, cutting and sanding or filing of the uh, photo etched uh, joints. That's a great little touch. So as I was saying, the Warrior started life in 1972 and it was designed to be a, a mechanised combat vehicle for the 1980s, basically to work alongside the uh, British Challenger 1 tank. 
Production started in 1984 and just under 800 of these vehicles were produced for the British Army. And the British Army has used warrior vehicles in uh, the first Gulf War, in Bosnia, in Iraq and in Afghanistan. The warrior has a crew of three, a driver, a commander and a gunner, plus it has space inside for seven soldiers with enough supplies for 48 hours in nuclear, biological or chemical conditions. Of course, as with many vehicles, there were many variants of the Warrior. So there are also artillery observation versions, um, battery command versions, uh, recovery vehicle versions, um, armoured ambulances and so on. One thing I found about this kit is that quite a few of the parts I'm adding now get completely covered by future parts. Here's a good example of that there with this armour plate going over the bottom of the vehicle. For the rear section, a set of working doors is included with detail on the interior. I didn't add the interior detail because I'm going to keep the doors closed, but it's there if you want to use it. And here I am adding all these bits of stowage and extra armour and so on. There's lots of great detail on these. I love the look of this vehicle. Like the rear hatches, these um, top hatches also have interior detail if you want them and they can be set up so they're working. The mud guards at the rear are made from plastic. Maybe they could be made from photo etch, but uh, it doesn't really bother me too much. Here we have the side armor system. So this uh, very detailed riveted side piece. And then various arms go onto this, which keep this slat armor at a distance from it. However, before constructing that, it's a good idea to flip this piece over and fill in some of these ejector pin holes. They'll be much easier to sand when you haven't got the slot armour on the other side. And several of those ejector pin marks will be visible on the final model, so they do need filling. There's quite a lot of storage like this that goes on the back of the vehicle. I typically built these up, but I'll leave them off until painting because there's quite a few nooks and crannies that it would be quite hard to get paint into. Again, the turret is largely a single piece. The hatches that go on have interior detail again and can be workable, but again, I did, uh, I did glue them shut. A simple mechanism there that allows elevation of that main gun. You can see here that I've started to build up the uh, optics. 
If we look at the instructions, these are quite complicated optics. The instructions tell us to paint these clear parts uh, MC102. That is uh, Meng's own uh, colour codes for their own paints. Which, uh, the colour is transparent blue. But of course I can't put that part on yet because um, the inside of the optic, so the inside of uh, B59 there, needs to be painted. Otherwise you're looking through the transparent blue to the, uh, the uh, grey plastic, which is not cool. And of course I don't want to do all the masking for the transparent parts either. So I left all of the transparent parts off for now. And that necessitated leaving off a few plastic parts as well until later. This is a good example of one of the optic parts that the instructions could be a bit clearer about. It's not fully clear here which parts of this transparent part should be transparent and which should be painted. So you need to look at reference photos of things like that. The slat armour on the turret easily attaches, but like all the slat armour, I'm leaving it off for separate painting. The wheels themselves are easy to construct. They're all made from two parts with a polycap in the middle. I don't always use polycaps when the kit tells me, but they do help to uh, make the mounting a bit more secure. Here is the jig which Meng provides for the track construction. So we take our two separate links of track, separate them, and we have there you can see a pin on one side of the track piece. So we clip them together there, like so. Obviously the other side is still open. We take a run of seven of those pieces together, put them into the jig, take them out of the jig again and put them in the right way. The jig keeps everything nice and tight together and then this sprue of separate pins goes in to mount them into the side. I found this system fairly reliable once I got used to it. I got a good production line going. I did the entire track length and that's uh, 79 links on each side in just a couple of hours. There aren't a huge number of spare pins though. There's only about two extra so you need to be careful with them and, and very carefully put them in. Despite the jig it is possible to have them bend slightly so you have to be careful. And here we go, here is the final working track. Okay, and here is the kit in its almost fully built stage. And I love the look of this, I had great fun building this, and I just love the way that this looks now. Um, there's just something about it, I don't know what it is. I think it's going to look fantastic when I get all of those extra optics and so on on the turret as well. Of course, a lot of this is still not glued together because I want to paint the pieces separately. So for example, the slat armour still needs to go on the turret. And of course, all these parts still come off because they're not glued in. So of course, the big question now is what colour to paint the vehicle. I am of course going to go for the uh, desert version, but quite which colour to use for the desert yellow, I'm not sure. There are varying reports as to whether the light stone colour, which is reported on the MOD website, is the same colour that was used by British forces in World War II. In reality I'm probably not going to worry about it too much and I'm probably going to mix some kind of colour myself uh, for my AK real colours or my Tamiya paints. Of course the great thing about doing a modern vehicle is there are lots of reference photos available. 
These are all slightly different versions of the Warrior, but they are useful for ascertaining uh, things like the amount of, sort of damage and chipping and so on and the dirt which uh, occurs on these vehicles. So guys, that's my Warrior build for now. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this kit. As I say, it was a really interesting kit to build, uh, great fun, uh, very relaxing, no big issues at all. In fact, not even any small issues, I think. Uh, it virtually fell together. Um, genuinely comparable to a uh, Tamiya kit in that regard, I think. I was really ple pleasantly surprised with this one. So of course, it might not be the next video, but I will be painting and weathering this in a future video. I might also have a look to see if I can perhaps get hold of a few uh, British soldiers to go with it. So until the next video, thank you for watching guys and have fun modelling.